Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Martin Cross Nation, and today we're going over the Lux medals that we got for the uh, Key Art 16 EX Plus banner. So we're going over Yuna and Riku and Pain, as well as the HD armor of Ericus. Now, just like usual, as you guys can see on my screen, uh, I already have the medal analysis articles already written and posted on my website at khuxnation.com. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, I'll leave the this I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, so you know Riku and Pain is a magic upright metal tier seven AOE has a total max multiplier of 8.82 to a 13.56 uses four gauges and this is what it does it raises your upright strength by one tier for two turns and it flicks more damage the more lux collected in that stage hd armor of ericus is honestly going to be the exact same thing it's just a speed upright version of you know reef and pain now the reason that i'm covering both these metals within the same metal analysis article is because basically they're i mean quite literally they're the exact same metal uh, just different attributes. So basically when it comes to these metals, they are, they're fairly straightforward on what they're to be used for. Okay. You want to use these metals when you can, you're able to get large amounts of Lux, which is gonna predominantly be mostly towards raid boss setups or Lux setups as some people call it too. And that's primarily obviously because of the fact that to reach this high end of multiplier, you need more Lux. Uh, because of this, I highly recommend that the traits that you uh, that you shoot for when you like roll traits for these metals is gonna specifically be towards raid boss traits. Okay, that plus 40 raid boss trait. Because honestly, that's gonna end up being like one of the only traits that are actually useful for this metal. Uh, just like I said before, because of the fact that you're you're almost always going to be using this metal only for raid boss setups. So because of that, obviously you want raid boss traits to go along with that. Also, it should also be just as obvious, but you should also be equipping any sort of uh, max lux skill on these metals as well, uh, just to help go along with them. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you can get the right traits and the right skills on these metals, these can basically be almost like your ultimate raid boss uh, metals, okay? But if you don't, then you don't really want to use these metals at all because otherwise you're going to be hitting the low end of the multiplier. So like if we take a look at our total max multiplier right here, we see the 8.2 to 13.56, okay? Um, but realistically, if you're not using this middle for a raid boss setup, uh, you can just completely ignore this 13.56. It's like doesn't even exist, basically, okay? Because most quests don't dish out tons of lux generally uh, compared to a raid boss. So chances are that most of the time you'll end up getting you'll end up hitting that 8.82 uh, area of the multiplier instead. However, if you are fighting a raid, box, raid boss, then you can just ignore that low end and you'll be hitting mostly just the 5.56 spectrum instead. Realistically, uh, these are just pure damage metals. They re honestly don't do anything at all. The only thing that they do is raise your upright strength by one tier for two turns. So once per turn. And that's... That's like almost nothing. For a tier 7 metal, that's that's really bad. <laughs> and that's actually fairly evident in their score. Uh, you know Riku Pain has a score of 22.280, whereas the HD Armor of Ericus has a score of 22.308. They're basically the same, they're just slightly different. Um, and this becomes fairly obvious when I take a look at their tier 7 uh, spreadsheet that I have on my website as well. So like right now I'm looking at the tier 7 spreadsheet. And right now it's organized by score. And when we take a look at their scores, they're actually all the way here at the bottom, uh, grouped with the World That Ends With You Art 2 medal as well, because just like I said before, it's exactly the same, just a power version of these two medals. Um, but yeah, they're all the way at the very bottom of the Tier 7 list. I mean, it makes complete sense. They're, they're literally just damage medals, but they don't even do that much damage, okay? <laughs> Compared with what they do, these should be more of like a, a Tier 4 or 5 type medal. Um, that's where they would... That's where they should be kind of grouped up with, to be honest, for off the top of my head anyways. However, okay, that's just in terms of score. What if I actually compare the total max multipliers for the, all the tier 7s, okay? So, if we take a look at their total max multipliers, uh, they rise up just a little bit, but they're still pretty much near the bottom of the whole spreadsheet. So that tells you right there that their base multiplier is honestly not that great. It's honestly, for tier 7 metal, it's actually pretty trash. All right, so what about their alternative total max multiplier? Let's take a look at that. So we go by descending, blah, blah, blah. So they actually rise up 
a quite a bit amount now, which is a good sign, okay? With a multiplier of 13.56, uh, that's actually a fairly decent multiplier. The average for a tier 7 metal, that's decent anyways, is around the, the 11 to 12 range. So anything above that tends to be typically good. And these metals, when you do like raid bosses, for example, uh, will reach that 13.56 multiplier, which is what you want. Um, but then again, that's still hovering around the average range. If you, I mean, just right above that, uh, you can see that even the Foreteller EX metals have the same multipliers for their alternative total uh, max multiplier. So it's like it's they're literally hovering within this like kind of slightly above average range uh, in terms of the tier 7 metals. All right. So enough about tier 7 metals. Let's compare these metals to all the metals in the game. All right. So right now the whole thing is organized by score and we're going to scroll down until we find these metals. All right. So these metals are actually fairly low in the spectrum. You guys probably can't tell, but I'm basically in like the middle of the whole spreadsheet for all metals uh, in the game, okay? And there's over 400 metals in the game. So if I'm somewhere near the middle, uh, that's a pretty bad sign. <laughs> like these are tier seven metals, but they have a, but because of the fact they have a score of like 22 point blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you look at this, just look at the metals that are surrounding uh, these, these three metals right here, okay? Just slightly below that, they're surrounded by some tier five and tier three metals, a bunch of tier threes. And just even above that is some like tier, still tier five, uh, tier threes, and there's there's a little bit of tier four sprinkled up slightly above. Okay, but essentially, like like I was saying before, these these are more in line of what a t what I would expect from a, like a tier four metal, um, and maybe a high tier three metal, but uh, definitely not a tier seven metal. So in terms of tier seven metal, these these metals are really bad, They're really bad tier seven metals. Honestly, uh, you might be better off for a raid boss setup, just using any other tier seven metal that has a raid boss trait instead. You'll more than likely than not end up doing uh, a lot more in terms of your luck setups in that regard compared to trying to use these metals instead. These are more towards like the beginner intermediate players who are just trying to get a quick raid boss setup. Now in terms of uh, some of the best ways to use these metals, because of the fact that they are pure damage metals, okay, and they only provide that one upright buff, there is two ways you can use this, okay? You can use it as a mainly damage metal, so you can have it near the back end of your Keyblade, or if you have like the typical competitive uh, beginning setup, so like Kyrie EX with a extra attack uh, copy metal, uh, you can actually put these metals within the third slot of the Keyblade, depending on the Keyblade you're using. So like for example, here on my screen, uh, on the Fairy Stars, if we're using the Yuno Riku and Pain metal, and it has like raid boss traits and whatnot, uh, we can actually put the metal in the third slot. Uh, so that way, by the time uh, we've hit the Yuno Riku and Pain metal, uh, we will we will have achieved our uh, capped out total of plus seven upright buffs. Uh, and then at that point, uh, the rest of our setup will be able to do uh, more towards their max potential of damage. And the same exact thing is going to apply uh, to the uh, HD armor of Ericus as well, okay? And I'm using the Olympia as an example of like a keyblade that could use the uh, HD armor of Ericus. Something I do want to point out too is that uh, just to help show how stark of a difference uh, raid boss traits actually do, alright? I, I went ahead and took the liberty of setting this up real quick. So, as of right now, if you would look at the bottom of the screen, the total damage that this setup does with just these three metals alone does about 9.3 million damage according to a website. And just a quick disclaimer, the website is supposed to be used more as a comparison tool. It is not an accurate representation of how much actual damage you do in game. Alright, so knowing that, okay, take a look at this, okay? At base, in a normal quest, okay, this, according to the website, this setup with just these three metals would do about 9.3 damage. So if I were to turn on the raid boss uh, button that's on the site, okay, take a look at this. So we go from a damage of 9.3 million damage, if I turn on the button, it increases all the way to a damage of 19.1 million damage. That is a very stark damage, damage uh, difference, okay? That's, we basically jumped an entire 10 million damage uh, by having three raid boss uh, traits. Now, for those of you who are looking at this and be like, well, yeah, of course it's going to be that much because you you have three raid boss traits on that thing, okay? 
All right, well, let's let's do this instead then. Okay, I'm going to take off two of these, and we're going to have just one raid boss trait. Because honestly, having one raid boss trait is a lot more likely than having three. All right, so if we do that, okay, this is how much it is. It ends up being about 12.6 million damage. That's still a big difference. That's still about a 3 million difference compared to if you don't have the raid boss, uh, if you're not fighting a raid boss. So if we turn that off, see again, it's here at a damage output of 9.3 million damage but if we turn on the raid boss option uh, it, it shoots up to about 12.6 million damage and that's with just one raid boss trait so again just to emphasize these metals are more meant for specifically raid boss and luck setups uh anything outside of that and they're kind of trash other than that that's it for today guys if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button down below it's the best way to know when i upload new videos like at this one if you guys have any thoughts or comments as to like different ways you could potentially use this metal that I did not talk about in this video, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Martini Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next episode.